Hello YouTube, this is Truno. I built a new bee farm on my survival server. It's fairly large, with almost 300 beehives. And with the 121 crafter that we have in 120.4, hermitcraft style, using a data pack. It produces over 700 honey blocks per hour. Or if you don't have the crafter, 2800 honey bottles per hour. And the best thing about it, it's both cheap as it doesn't need a ton of redstone and it does not require dispensers filled with bottles. This whole farm will work with one double chest of bottles, maybe even with one chest of bottles. The farm core is basically an idea by Stromner and we use one crafter setup for the whole farm to convert all of the honey bottles to honey blocks and the bottles are immediately recycled. The farm is set up in a nether where we don't have night so the bees work all the time and we have a chunk loader so we can turn on and off the farm. The farm is designed to fit in a 3x3 chunk area so it can be loaded by one chunk loader. Let's first look at a traditional bee farm in the world download. We have beehives that we read with a comparator and the maximum signal strength will be 5 if the beehive is ready to be harvested and then the signal will reach this block, activate this dispenser it will generate a filled honey bottle that will be inside of this block and before it can glitch out or up, it will be picked up by the hoppers below. The one thing that may look unusual to you are these trap drawers on the pistons. I use these to be able to shut the farm off because if I activate the pistons, then all of these trap drawers will be pushed up and that means the bees can still pathfind into the hives so they will go back in. But they won't come out because they think the hive is blocked. So by flipping this lever we can move all of the bees inside the hives and turn the farm off. Sometimes fence gates are used but the problem with fence gates is that you have to have a redstone signal to keep them open. So you would need a redstone signal down below here probably and this would interfere with the hoppers. I think the way with the trap doors and the pistons is easier. I did however make a little optimization also coming from El Mango. We have a second hopper line here that transports the bottle and the first hopper line just points into nothing. The reason for that is that if one of these hoppers would be transferring a filled honey bottle to this shulker box loader here and at the exact time the dispenser would fire, then the hopper would be in cooldown and not be able to pick up the bottle. So you might end up with bottles laying here on top of the dispensers. So if you want to use this design, just use a second row of hoppers. Also, I put in a divider after 8 hives that also goes back to a mango. Bees might not pathfind back to the hive if we make these chambers too large. And he recommends a size to, of 8. I haven't verified it, I just used it. And I also use it in this design here so that I don't make the chambers too large. From a rates perspective, this farm is pretty optimal, I think. And it produces roughly 12 honey bottles per hour and hive. But this is just 3 honey blocks per hour. So we'll need a ton of hives for serious honey production. And here's the design of the farm with almost 300 hives. I certainly didn't want to provide and fill 100 shulker boxes of bottles. There are three designs that I know that don't need bottle spam, which are Ian Ixophores, pictured here, Stromless design, which I use here, and item filters. Now Ian's design is great if you have a small number of hives, but I don't think it's very well suited for a large number of hives and I'll discuss this later. As for item filters, the basic idea is that you have an item filter that somehow sucks out the honey bottles from the setup but not the empty bottles. But this is a bit of a nightmare to fit the redstone. Mind the fab recently did a video using this idea, but it requires quite a lot of components per beehive. But fortunately Stromless design is ideal for my requirements and I was able to blow it up to 300 hives. Here's a slice of the farm and you can see how few components we actually need. We have three rail lines. And first we send a hopper minecart filled with bottles over this hopper here. So we put a bottle in, this will end in this dispenser. Then after the cart has completed one row, filling in all of the dispensers with one bottle, it will go over this activator rail and this will activate a redstone signal here for all of the dispensers. And now there are two cases. First, the beehive had honey level 5, like in this case. Then we'll end up with a honey bottle in the dispenser or let's put in a fresh bottle. If the honey level was less, 
Then the bottle will be in this beehive and be picked up by this hopper here. So we will either have a full honey bottle in this dispenser or an empty bottle here in this hopper. After the cart completed the first row, we will dispense a second minecart that goes under here. And this one is designed to collect all of the honey bottles out of these dispensers. So it goes in here. And the first minecart, after putting one empty bottle into all of the dispensers, will finish its turn here and go down and return, collecting all of the empty bottles from these hoppers. And all of them go in a circle, so we will have one minecart where all of the filled honey bottles end up and one minecart where all of the empty bottles end up. So all we need now is a way to circle all of the minecarts and of course to craft up the honey bottles to honey blocks. And this is the minecart that distributes the bottles. And it usually will be pretty full, but it goes into the stack. And we have another spot with a chest full of empty bottles. And we have an etho clock here that fires once every 30 seconds or maybe once every minute. And what happens if the clock is fired? That the first minecart is released and starts distributing the bottles and the lowest minecart here is also released onto this track and goes back under this chest. And of course the lowest minecart will always end up with most of the bottles in here. So this minecart will be filled with glass bottles once it starts its cycle. Using an observer here makes sure that the fence gates opens just long enough to let one minecart through. So we won't have minecarts glitched into each other. And since this track is basically one circle, so the minecart starts here collecting the bottles and ends up here in the stack, we can set the minecarts in any interval we choose. So 30 seconds is pretty good because it ensures that we will harvest the beehives quite frequently. And the other circle, which works very much in the same way, starts here with a dispenser that is activated by the minecart passing the spot back there. And again we have a circle that ends here. And this minecart goes onto a heater by Inspector Talon. And all of the filled bottles will end up in this hopper. Now we need to lock this hopper for a moment when the minecart arrives, so that this hopper does not pick up the broken minecart. This will end up in this stack, go down here and back to the dispenser. And that's pretty much it. In 120 or lower, you would just fit a shulker box loader to fill all of the honey bottles. And you would probably have a shulker box unloader here to add fresh bottles. The world download contains a shulker box unloader from Summers the Sage for the traditional honey farm. But as I said, we already used the crafter which is available as a data pack for 120.4. So of course we craft the honey bottles to honey blocks and recycle the bottles. Now what happens is this. All of the honey bottles go over this item filter here that makes sure that we only get honey bottles and are then sent into this crafter. The crafter will spit out the items into this dropper and then we have another hopper line and an item filter that will suck out the honey blocks. The honey blocks go into the shulker box loader and the empty bottles will continue this way into our bottle supply. Now there's a little snack. Minecarts that crisscross like this will easily pick up contents from the other cart even if they go in a way where you think it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't happen. And maybe a minecart wizard could design the tracks in a way that this doesn't happen, but I just made my processing a bit more error tolerant. It could happen in theory that empty bottles end up in this hopper. They would just go into this dropper here, be not picked up by the filter, and they would go back in this dropper where we have the empty bottles from the crafter anyway, so they are recycled. And on the other side, down here, we have another item filter under the minecarts picking up the empty bottles. And this will suck out any honey bottles, which might occasionally be in there. And I use a dropper elevator to send them back into the crafter. Problem solved. So some bits and bobs. I didn't put in trapdoors to shut the farm down. In my survival world, I run this in a distant region of the nether. And if I want to turn it off, I just deactivate the chunk loader. Now about the rates. I measured about 
2900 honey bottles per hour or roughly 10 bottles per hive, which is on a per hive base a bit less than the 12 bottles in the optimal setup over there. I'm not sure if this could be improved so that we get closer to 12 bottles here, but I'm quite happy with the rates. I chunk load the farm and it will fill a shulker box in just over two hours, so that's fine for me. One minecart distributing bottles can handle 320 hives at most. So if you want to extend the setup, you'll have to build a second minecart processing station. Perhaps just copy this module and build it twice, I don't know. The shulker box loaders that I use are a design that Doc M showcased in a recent Hermitcraft video and he says it's from Glotz. In my experience, this loader is lossless unless the loader from Borken that I used in my earlier videos as Borken's loader has a chance of about 2.5% to lose a broken shulker box. So this loader needs just a few more components, but it's lossless. The lag comes mostly from the bees and from the open hoppers, but mostly the bees. So I don't care too much about these redstone lines. They are activated once every 30 seconds to one minute. A few building tips. In these design you can always replace one glass with a wall that gives you access to the blocks behind that and to the bees, so you can breed them for example. Now one thing that I totally forgot until I had built this farm is that you can use flowering azalea leaves instead of grass blocks with flowers. Now this is actually much easier to bring in the beehives because you can just use temporary blocks here, then put in your beehive, place the wall in front and then break the temporary blocks and the bees won't escape this way. Now if you have hives that aren't full, so you had brought in less than three bees, you can actually breed up the bees until the hives are full through these walls. You will know that the hives are full because at all times there are bees outside. So even in the nether usually you will have times when pretty much all of the bees are inside. If you have a few extra bees that's not bad. It will even slightly increase the rates, but these extra bees are not lack efficient. So you can have three bees per hive if you have more then some will be outside all of the time. They will still work, they will still produce honey, but they will also produce more lag. So my recommendation if you build a large scale farm, especially on a server where you want to make lag friendly farms as not to hamper other players, I would go with hives that have three bees inside and no extra bees. You can breed up bees using a setup like this. The beehives arranged in a way that the bees can access them even if you have a block in front. Now these beehives here on top will at some point be filled with bees, you can breed them up. And if at night some bees are still out there then you know that all beehives here have three bees inside, you can break them and take them to your farm. Don't use flowers here because flowers will cause bees to create honey so they will be a long time in their hives and that means they won't grow in this time. Baby bees only grow if they are outside. And I also added a small honeycomb farm and for this I just chose the traditional design very much the same as this one over here. But of course I used the crafter setup to supply the shears. So what happens is you fill in the iron blocks here. The iron blocks will be converted to iron ingots. So if this barrel is empty we will craft more ingots. And then the iron ingots go into a pre-filled crafter here. And as soon as this barrel is empty, we no longer have any shears, we will craft new shears at a rate that is slow enough that this hopper can refill this crafter, so we will never run out of ingots. As I usually need more honey than honeycomb, I did bring in the off switch here. And the rates for the setup with 24 hives are about 850 honeycombs per hour. This one is not integrated into the honey farm. However, in my survival world, I build it in the same chunks below the farm, so I can chunk load both with one chunk loader. Now about the building materials. This farm just needs two hoppers, one dispenser, three powered rails and one piece of redstone dust per hive, which I believe is pretty much as low as you can get. And of course it doesn't need bottle prefilling. That was the point of it. The standard design here uses no rails but it uses one comparator for more redstone dust, but the main point of course are the glass bottles that I have to fill in. So I really like Stromness design here. It's cheap and pretty efficient. And finally, why not just blow up Ian's design? Now if you're not familiar with that, you have a bottle supply here. Basically, on a clock you set one bottle all the way through this dispensers. And here's a setup for shares and honeycomb. Now, 
I love this for a smaller number of hives, but it doesn't scale as well. The more hives, the faster you need to cycle the bottles and the more bottles will be filled with honey and cycle without giving any benefit. Say you want one bottle per hive in a minute, then for one hive you send one bottle every one minute. For 10 hives you send 10 bottles into 10 hives per minute. For 100 hives you send 100 bottles into 100 hives per minute. And a lot of these bottles will then be filled with honey, so they are kind of unnecessary operations. And for 300 hives you won't even be able to do this at all, because then you hit the cap of the hopper speed. And for the math wizards among you, the redstone effort for Ian's farm is quadratic in the number of hives, while Stromless design is linear. Of course you could have several circles of Ian's farm, but then each circle needs its own item filters, bottle supply and a crafter, which kind of defeats the purpose. I wanted one crafter and one bottle supply for the whole farm. As usual, there's a word download and Lightmatica files in the description. This is for the 120.4 Java version. The download has the experimental 121 features enabled. I believe the farm core should work as well on Bedrock, but you would have to redesign all of this minecart station here because this was designed for Java and won't work on Bedrock. And that's it. The farm has been grinding away, pro producing quite a lot of honey. And I also have a decent amount of honeycomb, so I will probably shut off the farm now. And I believe this farm is another great showcase for the crafter, because it eliminates the need to collect all of the honey in bottles and craft them up. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. And see you next time. Bye bye.